BFR into IMC. We use the term generically, but in truth, there are hundreds of different scenarios, each with its own unique mix of judgment, circumstance, experience, and luck. You know, most people talk about unintentional, uh, you know, IMC. This was about as intentional as it could be. After an incident, though, the questions tend to be the same. What was I thinking? How could I have done something like that? In the lead up to a flight, there's one set of answers. It was, everything was sky clear below 12,000, um, no precipitation anywhere around. I mean, I could see the ground right there. I could see that, you know, it wouldn't be too long before I'd be at the airport. If I could get on top of that broken layer, I could be VFR on top and, and go all the way. Of course, the company I was working for was in a hurry to get their airplane back. Being fairly young, I thought in a hurry meant whatever I needed to do to get there. Yeah, I thought it was no big deal making this flight. In the aftermath, though, the answers are very different. I had got complacent and just said that, oh, you know, I'm going to have a nice smooth flight because it's exactly what I had on the flight up to Philadelphia. I, I didn't want anybody to tell me the weather wasn't good enough to go. But I was goal-oriented, man. I was going to land a Hilton Head. And all I was getting was get that thing back here. Well, the context was get it back when it's safe to do it. Between those two sets of answers lies the experience itself, the worry, the fear, the danger, from terrain and obstructions. Visibility was you know, really atrocious, but I didn't get spooked again until I saw the tower go by. I thought, well, I missed the tower, and then I started thinking, I wonder where the guy wires were. From disorientation. When I finally broke out, you could see the ground again. I was at greater than 60 degrees of bank and at least 30 degrees nose down. Airspeed was through the roof. From traffic conflicts. The really embarrassing part was that there was a, a business jet departing Hilton Head, and he saw me on TCAS, and he had to do an evasive maneuver because he didn't know where I was going. Or from a simple lack of preparedness. I was just very, very shocked at, in the two to three minutes that I was in that cloud, about how far behind the airplane I got. Then I actually broke my altitude, looked around, and here I was way off course. And afterward, the nagging worry about what might have happened. You know, if it had been a few years uh, since I had flown IFR, or if I had been a VFR-only pilot, it certainly would have been a different experience. It could have uh, fallen apart at several points through that flight. These are the happy endings. For many others, for the pilots whose stories you only hear on the news or read in the NTSB database, there's no such opportunity for reflection. We wonder how they could ever have made such mistakes and are comforted by our own superior skills and judgment. And yet, deep down, we know that those pilots almost certainly felt the same way, that they planned their flights and weighed the risks without ever doubting that they'd make it through. You know, it's funny how your mind works when you're trying to get somewhere. But this is how these sort of things happen. In the rest of this course, we'll look at how to keep them from happening. <laughs>